It was a great year for BYU basketball as the Cougars won a share of the conference title. It was also a great year in 1951 when BYU won a national championship. This is a, an exaggeration, forgive me, but I feel a little when I meet my teammates again like Alma must have met when he saw the four sons of Mosiah. Former BYU basketball star Roland Minson was talking about his reunion with some of his Cougar teammates. And Brigham Young goes rolling down the court. They got together to celebrate the 60th anniversary of their milestone victory at New York's Madison Square Garden. Dayton fights hard, but the scrappy team from Utah has too much on the ball. It was March 17, 1951, when the Cougars won the NIT championship, which then was college basketball's biggest prize. We had a parade when we got back to town, and uh, we were probably as famous as any team in the nation. The uh, school got uh, probably more publicity than over anything that had been done up to that time. A long side shot racks up the score for Brigham Young before a sellout crowd. Of course, the excitement was there. But I think, and I want to believe this is how I felt, <laughs> but I realized what a great blessing it was to me to be a sophomore, to be on this team with such outstanding uh, players and outstanding friends. It was, just, it was just a great thrill. Also a thrill that year was when the Cougars played several preseason games in Brazil. At that time in Sao, Sao Paulo, uh, we had one mission home in all of Brazil. And so we didn't put BYU on our sweatshirts, we put Mormons. And uh, so it helped the missionaries down there to get in the homes because the Brazilians just loved basketball. We want to believe that uh, the whole experience was definitely aided the missionary program. One of BYU's top players from that year, Mel Hutchins, went on to be the NBA's top draft pick. The 6'5 center was never shy about his LDS faith in the pros, even getting permission to pray in the locker room before games. Hutchins' teammate was the first to volunteer. And he I says, what do I do? He says, you address the Lord and just say uh, what you feel. He says, I can do that. And he was a tough guy, six foot five, and he weighed about 230 pounds. And so he said the prayer, and he addressed the Lord, and he said, uh, now this team beat, beat us by 23 points last time. We want to beat them by 25 tonight. Amen. I said, oh, jeez. <laughs> he said, we were walking to the floor, and I said, Hutch, he says, did I do good? I said, you did good. The same can be said for Hutchins and his teammates. All have had successful careers, and each of them remained married to their first wives. <laughs> Seven of us have been bishops. Uh, four of us have been state presidencies. Uh, Lauren Dunn, general authority. Uh, Harold Christensen, a mission president. Uh, Boyd Jarman now has been in state presidencies and now is a patriarch. It is just, just amazing. And that, they say, is much more important than that championship game 60 years ago. Brigham Young wins by the widest margin in the 14 years of NIT finals. Just feel uh, that us flaky little athletic guys hung in there. And it's, uh, that's what we brag about more than basketball. And of course, their former coach was Stan Watts. You can watch any of today's segments as well as past shows at mormontimes.com. Just click on the TV tab at the top of the page. You can also leave us your comments on our Facebook page at Mormon Times TV. Thanks so much for joining us today on Mormon Times, and we hope you have a wonderful Sabbath day.